Hello comrades and welcome back to another video. Here today we're going to be looking at dev stream number 78 which was posted yesterday actually and uh, it reveals quite a few changes upcoming in the Garmin update which will likely be released next week seeing as how uh, it's been a little over a month now since the last update and boy time went by quick. <sighs> Remember it was just first week of school. It was the first week when the KV-85 got released. It's pretty good. Anyways, so, first up, uh, thanks to Amanu in the comments section for making some very helpful timestamps. It's really saved me and a lot of other people some time, so thanks for that. Uh, basically, I didn't have to skim through the whole stream like I did for the last one. That's pretty nice. So first up here we have something interesting I never would have thought of. They actually made some rules for the uh, capture points. So let's see. Alright, this is a good view. So as you can see here, the minimum range needs to be at least a bit more than a small barn or a uh, large house. So basically it's not... Uh, cap. By the way, these are capture zone rules. Of which are going to be applied to pretty much every capture zone now. So it needs to be, it will no longer be like a small room or a small house or something stupid where tank shells and grenades can just be spammed into it. It's going to be a large area or a semi large area in which you will have to go around the, uh, you'll have to go around the capture points and eliminate all enemies instead of just camping there and waiting for a tank to come by or something. Next up, here's something I really don't like, but it's actually going to be pretty useful. AT and ammo crates are going to, at least one AT and at least one ammo crate is going to be placed in each capture zone. I think that's what that means. Or at least most capture zones. And they have to be placed in at least only partial cover. They will be in the open, so the AT crates you can kill infantry if you're quick enough, but otherwise you're going to be cucked by the infantrymen on the AT crate. By the way, these are just general rules the developers set for themselves for each capture point, and some rules for new players to understand about each capture point. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so next... Well, I'm only going to list the important things on here. Next is a lookout position, or a sniper position, in which... It can be used for defense, so basically, there's going to be a place where you can climb up on top of a building. You know what type of buildings I'm talking about. You know, the ones with like a cracked roof and you can jump out on top. Yeah, that. There has to be some infantry cover, and preferably a bunker or with several floors or a high defense or with high defensive positions. So, tank shells and grenades, once again, can't be spammed into it and you instantly get destroyed. Next up there have to be some visible boundaries for the capture point so you can see the outline of the capture points and it will be easy to distinguish capture points for new players. Military zone is the same thing just show some barbed wire and stuff to tell new players they're in the right place. If there are, going to, if there are anti aircraft guns they won't be able to use be used against infantry and the short range and long range pointers, basically the long range says, hey this is a capture point, get over here. So new players aren't just like running around the map. And short range, which basically shows the radio set that everyone knows and has neutral feelings about <laughs> uh, inside the capture zone. So that's actually a great improvement upon uh, the capture points we have in the live servers right now. That's very, very interesting. Rito's doing some good stuff with the game. I like that. So next up at 1320 we have ch uh, the first changes to the first map, which is actually the town map. So let's Easy see direction. if we can load it in. So the town map, I'm not going to show every single map, honestly. Just basically... Um, if you saw it from the last weekly report or dev stream, whichever one you watched, 
uh, basically the capture or the spawn points are going to be changed. So when you spawn in, you have multiple points to choose from where you can spawn in to prevent spawn camping, and it's pretty much the same for what you can spawn in. Uh, that's very interesting and another thing to note is you won't have to zoom out every time you want to go into uh, or select another point to spawn in. So say you click on that, you go into this screen, and then you see all the spawn points. You can just click on the other point over there and see the spawn points that uh, you can access from that, um, what is it, from that capture point. So instead of zooming out in, you just boop. That's nice. It always annoyed me how we had to zoom out, seeing as though it's waste time and sometimes I just need to like spawn instantly as it's being captured or is about to be captured. So that's an improvement. That's nice. And there are going to be various changes to the town map, factory map, airfield, forward airfield, and mountain town maps. So basically all the assault maps, I think all the skirmish maps are being changed too, and encounter is being changed quite a bit as well. So basically all the maps are being changed, it's very nice. So let's see if we can see some changes. Bonky, I think, yeah. Oh, what the hell. Yes, alright. So it, it looks a bit... Bonky, I think. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, but uh, perhaps Dashi can explain a bit how this system works. Um, yeah, so before, as I said, we would play a hand the place every single spawn, so you would be able to uh, kind of predict where a tank would spawn, for example, because there was only one tank spawn. But as uh, you may see here, the yellow, the yellow circles are spawns, and they are automatically generated by the game within an area, which is uh, this. Oh. I guess that's something else I actually didn't catch. Uh, they're improving spawn protection too. So, I'm sure you've been camped by various tanks and douchebag Tiger 2 tanks, but now that won't really happen anymore as you can randomly spawn in anywhere around here in your tank or infantry. And I think it'll be like that for each of the spawn points, like the D1, A1 points, etc. So that's really nice. So let's see if we can fast forward to some spicy maps. Holy crap, I don't know what that is area, either. The area in which you're spawn protected, the blue area. Oh, that's the spawn protection area. I guess they're also vastly increasing the spawn protection area to prevent spawn camp. That's nice. Let's move forward. I actually did not plan this out too well. Uh. You would be able where the hell what are they doing actually well that's one of the spawn points changed uh it looks by the way all the capture points will look kind of similar to their previous re incarnations but as you can see they're being changed quite a bit Basically, given more cover, supply crates, and a larger capture zone. Really nice. Uh, let's go forward to the Ford Airfield map real quick, and then I'll show you one of the most exciting things coming in the update, other than all these spicy changes. So you can see these dank capture point cover stuff. It actually looks a lot more like a war zone and not a barren wasteland. That's nice. 4730. Ford Airfield. I actually don't know what the Ford Airfield changes look like, so hopefully those will be pretty good. Point B1. Yes. And yes. So you'll be able to, and because the next point is neutral, you'll be you able to spawn towards close. It. So. Oh. Fast capture. Yes, so the game will, yeah. will get under. That's cool. That's, that's real nice. So. It they just gave this point a bit, a few more sandbags and tank traps, <laughs> nothing much. Uh, this point looks like they, did they add another point in between? Yeah, there didn't used to be one. I remember that was just like a lone house on the side of the road, 
Now they added more cover in, the level in between the points. I, yeah, well, that's a whole separate actually, point. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's nice. So hopefully you have a general idea of the upcoming map changes. That's very, very nice. Thank you, Rito. You're actually doing good stuff with game instead of adding useless crap. But I should I should take that back. It really depends on how you look at the next few things being added. So at 120, as the propeller, which yeah, but... we have some interesting things here. So first off, let's see. No, not that. Not yet, at least. Effects for when you drive through the water. So the basically, they're saying there are new sounds for engines drowning and going into the water and stuff. That's nice. Bit more realism added to the game. Uh, let's fast forward a bit to one of the interesting things. Can I? Can my internet not be trash? This is nice. It's uh, starts sinking. Wait, never mind. And it's no. just uh, loads of fun to just drive vehicles into the water now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's a good message. Just drive, drive, drive things into the water, um, guys. Um, it's not what I'm looking this for. It doesn't want to float, guys. Sometimes and uh, it doesn't want to float. Let's try a Sherman. No, not this. Uh, yeah, when the, the water uh, splashes, nice. uh, sinking. So, so we have the uh, T38. <coughs> so let's see how that one sinks. Guess what happens? Except it doesn't. <laughs> Wait, what? what's this? Oh, it no. doesn't sink. That's what's that's going on. That's no, because the T38 uh, is an uh, amphibious tank. So. It'll float. So we have it's just let's put a big smile on my face. I'll a let it floating tank let it for run. the Soviets. Yeah, so basically Soviets. as everyone knows well, T thirty eight is actually an amphibious scout vehicle stuff, that uh it wasn't amphibious on launch of the Soviet Sovietskaya Sovetskaya Union. I don't know the last word. But anyways it wasn't amphibious on launch of the Soviet faction. Now it is. It only took them a year or two. But you know, we got we got amphibious tank. It's pretty good. So also being added for the German and American factions are two new amphibious vehicles. And as you can see, one has been updated to become amphibious. Very nice. So next we have. The swim so, uh, wagon. This is, of course, the swim wagon. Basically, and, uh, a lot of people it's the Kubel wagon that looks a bit different and it can go into the water. Type 166 swim wagon. Ooh. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. That's and, great. Uh, a lot that means a lot uh, more infantry underwater. coming up the side actually, there. Um, just, um, and that means a lot of infantry flanking my tank and placing anti-tank yeah, mines. You could show that again because it has a That's fun, isn't it? But it's nice nonetheless. Of course the Americans will get their own version. Uh, and by the way, the propeller on the ends, it automatically places down. That's nice. And just a note. The developers have acknowledged that the swim wagon actually wasn't able to reverse, but they felt that or reverse into the water and drive backwards in the water, but they felt that players would complain if you weren't able to do that, so they they allowed it to reverse in the water. It's just really, really slow and not beneficial, as you can see. And uh, yeah, it it goes backwards even. Though yeah, so that's that's nice. And let's take a look at the Amerikanski one. If it'll load. Hey! Hey, how's it going? It's pretty bad! Friends of <laughs> the bridge with five, five past. Yeah, I don't. I've had enough swim wagon. Stop. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Kill the horn before and for the engine. They're actually 
Right, so now we have the Amerikansky version, which honestly looks pretty trash compared to the Soviet Lundlis version. <laughs> yeah. So the Lundlis version will be available for the Soviets as well. So as you can see here, it has a camo, that's the default camo for the Soviet Lundlis. Of course painted with the it's kind of bright green to to standard to Soviet the, uh, army camo. Uh, the hell. But so what whatever, whatever I guess. It will come with two camos. Uh, uh, one for the Americans. Two for the Soviets. Uh, so it has the olive drab in black for the Americans. And the Vasyugan light and Kutuzov two-tone camos. Which I will show here. There's the Vasyugan in the water and outside and then the Kutuzov two-tone which I personally like and I assume these are going to be unlocked somewhere along the driver ribbon and will be placed in the motorized car slot thing the car Soviet slot basically so that's nice I'm not I so don't think I'm gonna uh, buy this I'll with stick with my uh, red brown, uh, just stick with my lay com Cosmo omelette so that's, that's nice. They also forgot to show the swim wagon ones earlier, but let's see that. Because I know the Germans will want to see... Oh, you can push a boat with a boat. <laughs> that's nice. So we we have the ambush DB seen on various other tanks and vehicles in the German faction. Very nice. Swim, or ambush DB. I don't know what you would need it for in the water, but you know, it's there. That's nice. And we have the tan camo also used in the Africa core, I believe. Is that the tan? No, it's the same one. What am I saying? Do they have a tan? Yeah, they do. That's a tan. That's nice. So that's pretty much all I have for this dev stream. Thanks, comrades, for watching, and I believe this update will come out pretty soon. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.